watching, watching the day unfold. Jada books is wonderful. It's something, it's something to behold. But if you love life as much as I do, put some, put something in the air now. And if you love Jack as much as I do, put some, put something in the air. Let's see ya. And good evening to you, Trinidad and Tobago, to you who are listening and viewing us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Welcome to NCBN TT, uh, our series, Know Your Representative. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are here, and this is at our fourth um, episode. With us on set this evening is none other than Councillor Teresa Lynch from the San Fernando City Corporation. Councillor for the Electoral District of Kokie Toruba. Councillor came in this evening with all energy bubbling, <laughs> and I know she's excited to share with us. So I want to welcome the burgesses of Kokie Toruba to Locked On, um, share the live here this evening as we speak with your representative, your local representative, Councillor Teresa Lynch, as she shared with us and to you, Trinidad and Tobago, what she has been doing the past three years likewise what she intends to do <laughs> this is the series know your representative and know what they do for you counselor pleasant good evening to you good welcome evening. to ncbn tt and i'm um, privileged to have you here this evening counselor this evening we have in a conversation so i want you to be comfortable sure <laughs> i want you know to be um real comfortable in the sense that you know just this is about you this platform really is a platform intended to have local representatives and representatives uh, from central government as well to share with the nation mm -hmm. um what they have been doing who are you because you know there is this notion and this belief that politicians don't have lives we politicians are, are not ordinary people politicians are some robots <laughs> you know and um they they once they elected then you know we don't, they have, don't have any life. So we really want people to know who you are. And therefore, I would really want you to share with us before counselor. <laughs> I don't want to hear with counselor yet. I want to hear Teresa Lynch. Who <laughs> are you? And share with, share with us. Talk, us, talk to us. Good evening, Maurice. Good evening, everyone that is locked on. Um, Thank you for having me, because I know there is a wide selection of us. So thank you for inviting me to the platform tonight. Who am I? Well, I'm 34. Right. I'm a mother of one. 
I am fun, loving, enthusiastic, just a pinch of salt in every single thing. <laughs> um, you name it and I am there. Wow. I am very much energetic. I am a fitness enthusiast. Wow. And um, that's, that's just me. Hardworking, devoted, anything, cool. any aspect of my life. And what your community involvement in yes. terms of... Yes, yeah. and of course, well, of course, the community involvement. Um, I've always been, I've always been an advocate. Right. So before I became a counselor, I've always been within the social profession. Right. So from guidance counselor, police social worker, and all of these different avenues, departments I have worked in. So advocacy and advocating for persons, uh, marginal groups, disadvantaged groups. That has always been me. I'm growing up being part of student council, student right. bodies. So you know, it, it's it's. It's something that kind of just got you on train for where for you the, are now. That's right. Yes. So the decision to really get involved in politics tied into that passion yes, yes. and encouraged you really yeah. into that, that Well, field. actually, before politics, I actually was aiming towards being more of a pageant girl. as actually Miss Teen. San well, Fernando. yes. <laughs> um, but I will always remember that time when I didn't win. Not that I lost, but I didn't win. My brother said to me, he said, I hope you know now beauty is don't, beauty don't make you rich far. I will never forget that day. Um, he came back stage and he said, I hope you know beauty don't make you rich too far. Right. So you better know to do your work. <laughs> so that was, that was actually why I was slanting to before. before. And then of course I just got into, into this. All right. And well, tell us, um, counselor, mm -hmm. now with regards to, as you said, the passion that you had even before being or having that, or taking that decision, making that decision to be involved in politics, you had that passion and well, you continue to have the passion and that close knit relationship with community, community work, youth advo yeah. advocacy, um, social work and that kind of stuff. And it fit right into that whole sphere of politics. Yes. And so share with us now that you well at that time, that, that first um, season or time that you when you did, threw your hat into the ring yeah. all right um, what what really would have inspired you who would have perhaps yes. inspired you as well um, well most persons would hear many times the PM or other ministers speak about one vote Lynch oh. so one vote Lynch is actually my dad nice <laughs> so um, he has been the local government representative for Koke Truba um, for 14 years if I have that correct and um, so growing up in that household, politics so it's was, in your lineage, it's, it's there. It's in your blood. It's, it's there. <laughs> so that is where it started, as well as my predecessor being Rondell Donawa is actually right. my friend from primary school. Wow. So, you know, you, you, you have always been this advocate. You have always been involved in these things. You have always been involved in politics. Mm -hmm. um, you have seen your dad done it. You have seen one of your friends from primary school done it. And... There was a vacancy because he did say that he was not contesting right. um, the next <clears throat> term. And very last minute, actually, I just said to my dad, I said, Dad, I think I want to do this, you know. And he said, um, you sure? <laughs> but I know that your sure was really... <laughs> because, I mean, he, he knows. You know, because, you know, I'm the only one that actually followed in his shoes out oh, of three okay. children, his last child. Right. And um, so he's like, you sure? I said, yeah. I said, this, I want to take this type of representation take on this challenge and I just literally got into it and uh, from the time I got into it that was it and I want to directly ask you that yeah. question is there any regrets no regrets no regrets at all um, it's it's a different um, phase of my life there are many things that I did in the past that I, I no longer do right. in fact um, traditionally every year I would take part in UE half marathon Unfortunately, since I've been in office, I have not been able to because there's, there's preparation, preparation for, for it. Um, five Ks, ten Ks, fine. Oh, it's just yeah, one. I could still do that on a random. All right. But to prepare for something like that, I had to know, put that aside. Or mm. matter of fact, not that I put it aside, it's just I haven't been able to really make the time and put that into my life into like how life. I should. All right. Yeah. Councillor, this is your second term. Yes. All right. And... Um, as mentioned before, you have, you have it in your blood, mm -hmm. all right? So you would have gotten that support, I'm, I'm, sure, yes. I'm assuming, um, that support and it from your dad experience. You are, uh, that particular, um, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, that particular electoral district is a part of the constituency of San Fernando East. Yes. So again, another foundation um, 
uh, constituency or constituency that I experience as well. Persons who would I, I'm certain would have really hold your hand, yeah. encouraged you, um, work with you, and share with you some of the things that you would have ought to learn or know mm -hmm. while being a, um, being a local government representative. Talk to me about um, being there, now, now being elected. Your first election was, what was the, the margin at the first one? Um, I think the second one is the, the yes. was, yeah. So, so just, just to let you know, my district, even though I am um, in San Fernando East, um, I belong to San Fernando East. I vote in San Fernando East. My district is between two constituencies, okay. San Fernando East and Point Pier constituency. Right, and then stick one, yeah. and you see, ladies and gentlemen, it's important for us to <laughs> highlight this sort of information so that people will know, yeah. because, I mean, I'm from yeah, Safari. Yeah. I wouldn't have known that yes. you are, you are you're between or bordering. I'm actually not even bordering. In fact, I have very little of San Fernando East. Most of my district falls it's, in Point Pier constituency. Wow. Right. Yeah. Continue, so continue. in fact, seven polling divisions fall in, in point of your constituency. And those would have been those those communities that did just for the information and knowledge yeah. of of the people that are listening. Those communities that would have make up that but that make up that seven PDs, so yeah. to speak. What 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 are those communities? Or who are those communities? Um, do you just by the names? Saruba, Gopolans, Marbella, because my district is very diverse. Right. Yeah. Right. So. And there's a reason why I asked you to just spell it out, so to speak, because you know, again, you will hear, and I'm certain as yeah. a representative, you would have heard those, those these, these cries. Yeah. Um, I don't know who my representative oh, is. Um, I never see them. Yeah. They only come around when it's election time, and that rhetoric continues. I mean, there are some that are at fault, yes. all right, to, to, to that cry. But really and truly, too, there is a need for us um, local representatives getting out there to the people, educating them, informing them of the burgesses, I mean of the electoral district, where it lies, the boundaries, what um, the fence line communities within those electoral districts, and having them know these things yeah. so that you know they will understand as well, well, where, which, which electoral district they, they fall into. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because there is today, there is today a whole lot of people in this country don't know the difference they between don't. local and, and, and central government and how they function and yes. even boundaries. Yeah. So and continue with regards to the, the you know, talking district. with the, the, the yes. district. And, and, and that's why, too, I'm glad to be on platforms like these because these platforms are the platforms where we can educate, educate the public as right. to how the district is. So we hear Koke Turuba and automatically you think she's the representative for Koke Turuba. Yes. <laughs> but in reality, I'm the representative for parts of Gopolans, Marabella, Koke Turuba, Currents, um, Orchid Garden. Orchid Garden. So there are so many different pockets within the, um, within the district. In fact, my district is the is the only district that runs north to south of the city of San Fernando. Okay. So it spans along um, the entire bypass, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just over six thousand, or just about six thousand, is currently the electorate, mm -hmm. and. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so the population is expected to be something between seven to eight thousand persons. Okay. So there I am, um, one me <laughs> for all of these persons. It's, uh, therefore, the, the, the your electoral district yeah. is one of the largest electoral districts within the corporation yes. within the city. Yes, it is the largest geographically within the city. The most pop, I'm the second most populated now. Okay. Um, I believe it's Marbella West. I believe is the most populated district, if I have that correct. Okay. Yeah. So. Therefore, as you said, one you. Yes. yes. <laughs> one you. At, at least you you you're managing, yeah. and I'm sitting that I you. I try my I try my best <laughs> to I, manage. I did I did ask you to share with us to the um the first time the yes. first election. Yes. So I, I wanted to hear um that first election. That so so the district has always been a marginal seat. Um, but it's known to be a marginal seat. The first election I won by 116 votes. Mm. Um, and this was your first election? My first election going into politics at the age of 29. Wow. Um, you know, and you're just all excited and eager. And yes, I won by 116 votes. Well, okay. Yeah. And then the, the, so the, and the second one, the second the election? The second election I won by 34 votes. But there were changes to my district. So even though the district name is Koke Turuba, um, one of my largest polling divisions were taken out of the district, a polling division with 336 um, in it. Mm -hmm. So 
So generally, if you do the maths, and it was actually one of my stronger polling divisions in terms of support. So coming into the second term, I was really at a disadvantage. Disadvantage. So I was playing catch up. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then too, for the, for, for also for the sake of the, of the viewers, and even perhaps too for your purchases out of uh, um, Kokie, the community that that PD, that major PD that was taken out yes. is, 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 is... It's in Koki. So Koki part proper. of Koki is now... Um, Koki, Koki district, a lot of Koki is actually under Monipur Navit. Councilor Koti district. district. So actually where I live, born and bred in Koki, we have never voted for Koki to rebuild. My household, um, they are known to vote for Monipur Navit. So um, now as it stands, I really just have Koki South. So oh, really and truly, when you hear Koki, we think of the swimming pool, we think of the hole, we think of okay. Forest Avenue. So those all of that is Monipo. All right, and, yeah. and now, and ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's important for the, you know for us to understand these intricacies yeah. Yeah. because you know from time to time, even I want, and we will, we will get to that with regards to when the services and goods that have to be delivered um, to Burgesses, they having to understand. Um, those ramifications and, how, and those dynamics yeah. is very important because you will, I'm certain again, you would, you would recall having issue with persons probably coming from other electoral districts and complaining, probably sending reports that, hey, the council are <laughs> doing so and so and to this and that, thing, and not knowing that yeah. where you live, ma'am, or sir, yeah, it's you not. are not <laughs> it, right? And I mean, you, you, it's, it's no fault really um, sometimes of, of, of the Burgesses because really and truly they just want redress yes and um, by any means necessary but um there is a system that we ought to ensure that we educate them on and therefore yeah. that's why i'm taking the time yeah. for your for your budgets for the sake of your budgets to understand the dynamics so that they too will really understand too well it's not that you really don't want to do anything for me you know because um i didn't support her <laughs> so that's why it's not that it's just that given the system and the, how things are you know she this is not your representative and, and therefore and, and, and i mean to maurice I mean, here we, we don't really want extra work to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we already have six thousand. Well, We're not trying to get an additional thousand. Well, if when we when we're ready to talk about the reform, <laughs> oh, the reform gosh, speaks yes, to extra yes, work. Yes. Yeah, so, but I mean, extra responsibilities yes. with obviously extra resources yeah. and that kind of stuff. So, um, when, at that when we reach to that point, we will we will share about that. So, there's uh, also you know, well, you said with regards to the the second election, it was um. um won by 34. Yes, 34. I do know because I was on the scene <laughs> at that time of these. Um, how many recounts? I think how many it was recounts one recount. You had one, one recount. recount. Initially, I won by one vote. And well, it, was, yeah, <laughs> it was actually a sense of deja vu because my dad, in his second term, won by one vote. Mm. And here is his daughter <laughs> now winning by one vote. I would never forget that <laughs> night. Daddy said, Well, apples don't make grapes. <laughs> <laughs> So you actually won by one vote with, with regards to when the first results were. For the were, first result, that is And the recount now. And then we did the recount. We wow. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, well, that was we, interesting. Yeah. Can I, if you had to stay with your one vote now, you would have really been like daddy. <laughs> All right, but that, that was good. Um, yeah. And I, I, why I, I brought it up, because I know in communicating with you during that time, the, the not frustration really, but the anxiousness yeah, and that, yeah. you know, that, that A anxiety. Lot of anxiety, yes. You know, because I... I was aware in terms of some of the work that you would have been yeah. doing, at least for your first term, um, the kind of support that you got yeah, as well. Yeah. And um, to really get the results at the end and say there's only one, yeah. you know, that would be shit. Well, well, truth be told, if I am to be very honest with you, um, before the election results, my dad literally said to me, he said, this will go two ways. You will win by 36 votes or you would lose and we'll do a recount. Prepare yourself. Wow. That was literally his words. He said, don't expect much because remember, as I said, my district would have changed. My my strongest strongest eh, mm -hmm. polling division went. Um, the odds were against us. Many persons, you know how we say the matse matse. Matse, yeah. Right. So many persons felt as though definitely Koke Tuba was not going to be in favor of the People's National Movement. However, it was. It was. <laughs> and I will tell you one of the things that I as well had had the experience because. When, when I had offered myself a serve, uh, the electoral district that I served was a marginal seat. Yeah. It is still a marginal seat. And um, I think the challenge with being in a marginal seat is that you have to prove your salt. Oh, you have to prove your salt. And the good thing about that too, I mean, I'm just saying my opinion, and I'm certain that you probably may have experienced that, 
you went out there to serve the people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, after elections, you are now the counselor for all of the peoples yeah. of Toruba, yeah. Kuki. Yeah. And your record, your work, your good work shall speak for you. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I guess the challenge is, yeah, it's marginal, but <laughs> do the work yeah. and you will see the results. Yeah. All right, so I guess that... Um, it, it, it paid off? It paid from off. From 1 to it, 34. <laughs> it paid off. It really did pay off because it, it said that somewhere along the line I was able to still retain and gain mm -hmm. in order to even make that sit for. Great. Yeah. Councillor, talk to me too. And again, for the viewers, I, I did this with the other two um, guests that came on. You're, you're young, 34, you said. And um, being a woman, mm -hmm. a young woman, your mother of one, Speak to us with regards to you as a woman, a young woman, a mother, in the politics, all right? Um, and I, 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 I want to hear, really, the perspective of it from a youth, from that youth right. angle, um, given you, your, as I said, your involvement before politics and now that you're into the politics, and um, what, were there any disadvantages? You, I know you said you had no regrets. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say that for me, I had um, two things going for me, female and young. And those two things together sometimes, two things, work. those two things separately sometimes don't work <laughs> and putting it together sometimes don't work, right? So there is, there is sometimes a need where you had to prove yourself. But one of the things I often reminded myself in proving myself and doing what is necessary, don't lose yourself in the process. Oh, yes. Oh, because yes. sometimes as a woman, because I'm actually the only elected female on council. Are you the youngest on council as well? Second youngest. Okay. Council Johnson is the youngest. Okay. Right? And it was the same for last time because last time we had Councillor Williams. He was the youngest. I was always the second youngest person that they had. So, you know, but, but as the rep, you, as a youth, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to lose that about you. You don't want to lose your spunk. You don't want right. to lose what makes you unique. You don't want, as a woman, to now have to try to be a man just yeah. to, or, or to show masculine qualities. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, we tend to always, sometimes when we compare women and men, we tend to always sometimes hear subtle statements like we have to be like men, but it's really just that you always try to keep who you are as an individual. And uh, it's just something I had behind my head. I keep behind my head and I just keep rolling with the punches. Great. So, Council, I want to stick up in there because yes. we want to go for five minutes yeah. and therefore we will come back to sure. review that question. Watching the day unfold Jada books is wonderful It's something, it's something to behold But if you love life as much as I do Put some, put something in the air now And if you love Jada as much as I do Put some, put something in the air Let's see ya. Tobago. This is the National Patriot Wendell Eversley. Hitting the oil with the facts. I connect the future with the past. Elevating step by step. Sweet tea and tea. PNM is the problem. We know UNC is not the solution. Soon I will be live on NCBN. Trinidad Tobago, I love you. Hi, this is Michael Johnson, Councillor for Marabella West, and this is Local Government and You. Here we will be discussing local government law and practice. How does it affect you on the ground 
in the community. So stay tuned to NCBN, coming soon. Hi, I am Maurice Alexander, host of the new series, Know Your Representative. A series dedicated to you, the viewer, knowing your representative and what they do for you. Join me on Wednesday, the 6th of April at 6 p.m. Right here, live on NCBN. Stay tuned. Current affairs. That's it, that's it. That's it. Welcome, one and all. I am Juju Love. Alongside my psychic, Mr. Ruka. Your partner in crime, Juliet. And we are going to be live on NCBM on a social media platform near you IG, Facebook, YouTube. We are going to be sensational, tantalizing, thought provoking, dramatic, educational, real, sometimes spiritual, mm, suspense, political analysis, drama. Take no prisoners, Juliet. Don't forget that part. Coming, Coming soon. soon. Life is the greatest thing I've no seen. Life is the greatest. Life is the greatest. Life is the greatest. Life is the greatest thing I've no seen. Life is the greatest. Life is the greatest. Life is the greatest. Life is the greatest thing. Oh yeah. Take a look around you. Front and look behind you. Jawbones is everywhere. Take a look inside you. Somewhere deep within you. Trust me, he's always there Well, if you love life as much as I do Put some, put something in the air now Yes, ladies and gentlemen Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen We, we Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to NCBN TT. And in set with us here this evening is Councillor for the Electoral District of Kokie Turuba, Councillor Teresa Lynch. Ladies and gentlemen, we are excited to have her. She's excited to be here. Yes. And um, Councillor, before we took the break, we spoke on, you, I, I'd ask you the question regarding how, how does it feel, you know, to be the youngest, obviously? Well, one of the youngest in the San Fernando Corporation, and as a woman, female, you know, in terms of your function and your operation, to really serve your budgets. You were touching, you were going along a line that I would have asked as well, as well too, but I'm glad that you started that with, regard, um, with regards to, um, you know, it is seen as a male thing, male-dominant yeah. thing. Yeah. And... Um, you, you're among some sharks yeah, that yeah. <laughs> you have to find a way and fight your way if you have to, all in representation. Yeah. Tell us. Um, but to be honest with you, I would say that even though very early in my term, I felt as though I had to prove myself being a youth, being female. Um, to be honest, I think that that has slowly um, eroded. eroded. Yeah. Because um, I guess eventually... And I would say even in this council, being the only female, my male counterparts do respect me. I've never felt um, ill-treated or specially treated, a matter of fact. Um, in fact, we just have I'm treated like they're equal. Right. You know? But I would say in the beginning that in my first term, and not just not in council and in that space of council, but just generally being a representative, being out there, being young, being female, you know, you would hear a person say, 
but she's a little school girl, you know. Oh, is this, <laughs> little, this little girl, this and little girl, you know. <laughs> and it's like, yo, I'm a big woman. <laughs> and I will tell you too, um, I mean, I am a sickler for it right now, in this season. I mean, personally, I have an issue with those that are that need to know when it's time to, to step aside. Right. I mean, I, I make no apologies for it. With all the greatest of respect for those who are serving presently and, um, you know, have served. But I think there is a time that it comes when you have to step aside and allow young people to really get their, 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 their feet in and, and bring that newness, bring that difference towards representation. And right. um, I'm glad that you, you mentioned that that youth fullness, all right, really connected with your Burgesses. Yeah. It, re it, was, it was, you were able to understand what is happening, all right, the season that we are in, and some of the things that you would want to implement to help make bring around that change. And I think that is where, you know, the, 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 that gap needs to be closed. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot, of, I mean, a lot of the political parties on the scene, you are seeing that um, really targeting young people yeah. in getting young people involved and encouraging young people to get involved in the politics. But as, as be that as it may, I want to hear your thoughts because, again, I ask all the, the representatives this particular question. Um, as much as there are political parties that are encouraging young people to get involved in representation and politics and the whole, given the type of politics that we see unfolding in this country now in terms of the um, central government and, and um, the politics, the main politics then, so to speak, there are a lot of people, particularly young people, that shun, they, they don't want to part, they, they want to shun away from that. You know, um, what would you, who, are, who, who is in it, would you um, want to say to our young people that are listening here today um, that may want to get themselves involved? involved. Um, I would say definitely go for it. Um, I think the dynamics have changed. Eh? A lot have changed from our parents to us to the other generation, the, the Gen Zs and, and the Alphas, right? Because right? we're still the millennials. Yes, yes. We, you know, we have persons that are in politics that are the baby boomers, mm. right? Um, a lot has changed. We have moved from encyclopedias to now the internet <laughs> <And> Google. to Google, <laughs> you know? So, so because you have all of these changes and all the dynamics, we have to also change our perspective. We have to change the image. We have to change who are the images of politics and the future of politics. So when you think about politics, I think it's, it's, it's almost like a dying art form wow. in the sense that there is few persons that are really interested in it. Um, but definitely the young persons that are interested, I would say definitely go for it. And to pick up from when you made the point, because that's an interesting point you made about it's, a, it's almost as a dying art form. Would you say it has a lot to do with, um, and people not wanting to be involved, has a lot to do, as I said earlier, with regards to what they see, mm -hmm. all right? They're not being encouraged. I mean, um, I think sometime last year, there was a comment that the Prime Minister made, which is very interesting, um, where he spoke about persons who were from public sector and um, service that are willing to, that have expertise, mm -hmm. and that can bring that to bear, so the development of the country are sometimes fearful of coming forward because of how political things are and how maligning things can be yeah. and mudslinging and you know drag people's name and their their their, their whole um, their, themselves and their yeah. families. All right. So would you say now that as a result of that, the expectation by those like yourself and other young persons who have you know come forward. You all have a greater expect. You are expected. You know, much as you desire of you all. There is a lot of expectation going into politics. It's expectation versus reality. Wow. But I think it's more important is your passion, your drive, your morality. Because if you are coming into politics, it should be because you want to make a change. Right. You wanna you wanna see something different. Your your goals, your values is what is what you want to bring to the space. So even though something because in every profession to nursing, yes. to, to any profession, profession from right. police to this, you always find that there may be things that you just don't like. It may not align with your values, your core values. However, you may go as a change agent or someone that could show a different face or a different perspective to all that is happening. Agreed. So I would say the same thing for politics. As much as there may be things that we see and we don't like, there are also things that we do like. Because That's here right. you have young persons advocating, young persons rep representing, 
you have persons that are changing the dynamics, even just the, the way we look at politics, the way we dress, the way we stand, the things mm -hmm. we do, because local government has changed. And I mean, we, we will probably get more in, into that. But what ro local government is and what it, what's being done and what it is, what it is and what it is, <laughs> you know, the, what Just it the, is on black and white and, and what, what it, it really is. Yes, that's correct. It's two different things. That's right. It's two different things. So, yeah. so you know, and that's because, again, things have changed. Right. And now we have more area representation rather than local government representation. Wow. So. And, and apart from area representation, you have now in communities, um, you have little pockets of in between communities actually coming up mm -hmm. and saying, listen, we, we, we prefer do our own thing. Yeah. We prefer come together and form our own little, um, group or little, own little organization to seek our own representation because right. we don't trust the system. Yeah. We are not comfortable with the yes. system. And that, that is what we will touch on when you talk about local government is and yeah. is. Yes. Because yes. that in itself will create that kind of um, wanting to get involved. And if the reality is not what it is on paper, and then you wouldn't get that. Exactly. So that then takes me to the point, to the question for you to share with us, um, because you spoke on to encouraging young people, still encouraging them, those who may be listening on to us. And I know one particular young man, which I would want to big up here this <laughs> evening. I think he borders your electoral district and Pleasantville. I think he recently moved to Malik Mali Lewis. Uh -huh. And he called me this morning when he got your, right. when, he, when you shared the yeah. invite to be here this evening excited he's one of my students i taught in school and he oh. was excited to hear from you <laughs> and i know you're listening malik and he is he, he participated in the um youth parliament yes and therefore i know he's one of them together with a lot of others who are Very listening here tonight, about who is passionate about politics and passionate about representation mm -hmm. from a community perspective as well so what i what i would want to find out is or you can share with us your what are you doing in terms of um, continuity, your involvement with the youth in mm. particular? Right. All right, because there, is yeah, there must be um, succession. that succession mm. planning. And um, in doing so, it's all about harnessing that, that talents and abilities amongst the youth within your electoral district. Somebody, talk to us about what are some of the things you do right. to be able to identify, to be able to unearth to within some of them. Um, that ability to be a part of, rep um, of good representation and even continue right. good representation if they so desire. Yes, so actually um, I, I did a program, but this was geared towards standard two children. Um, we did that in Koke Government School. It was actually first in the country, the only in the country. Mm -hmm. So the, the plan was to have on their curriculum, UTT's curriculum has actually advocated okay. for this to be in their curriculum, mm -hmm. where we have teachers, to the teacher students, they do um, live teaching classes, sessions for remedial, looking at numeracy and literacy. Okay. So we had a full curriculum in place, but the teacher students did not pick up, did not do it. In fact, the program was run by persons that we would have trained. But ideally, that's what I wanted, hence the reason why I went to UTT right on by current mm -hmm. and you know that's what we we're looking at in terms of building their their academic um, portfolio right. as well as in my first time I had a sports day um, but as you say as you know I'm a fitness enthusiast yes. um, just recently actually just today one of the guys in Taruba because we are forming a, a new group we're mm -hmm. going to form a, a sporting group in Taruba there but COVID really did dampen a oh, yes. lot of oh, things. Yes. Oh, yes. So in my first term, it took a lot for me to get to know the community. Now, it's a very strange community mm -hmm. because Koke is an old community. Um, there we have more seniors, more pensioners. Wow. I don't have much young persons, at least that part of Koke that I represent. Okay. So I really have more retirees in that district and, and those sorts of things. And then you have the one young, more youthful district is really Taruba. So Taruba, they are now um, they have now recently gotten their community center in 2020. It was commissioned. Um, however, they were still waiting for some development works because we had to still get the elevator installed. Mm -hmm. um, now that it is officially handed over to community development, we are waiting on a manager. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know you just have the regular youth programs for Christmas and all of these different times mm -hmm. during the year. So the idea is at that center to really house a after school program, really look at a sporting program as well because we really want to see how we could get those groups, Correct. those youths active. Active. And, yeah. And, um, I mean my involvement with Ministry of Community Development, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, of community development. I know that um, Turuba 
um, the community of Toruba, uh, some of the young people there, I know some of them in terms of um, the need for, and, and I will ask you if you, yes. there's any plans for, or, or there should be a suggestion to you, um, <laughs> plans for mentorship, mentorship programs yeah, yeah. coming out of, of that area. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of males, yeah. there are a lot of young males between the ages of 10 and 20 there about. Right. And um, I am certain that you would, you know, yeah. that, that's a good program. So actually that's know? something that we, we really, we, we were discussing because that's something that we really want to see how we can, you know, navigate yes. and get, because the idea is not to, to 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 do things after the fact you no. want to kind of get them on on track before um it's not a bad community at all mm -hmm. um generally it's you know everyone is very friendly everyone knows each other but you know you want to make sure that it stays that way and, and in order to to keep it that way you have to of course build the network and the camaraderie among the community councillor you you, yeah. you read me spot on yeah. because i I, I'm glad that you, you declared that and yeah. you decreed that the community of Tuba isn't a bad community because I must say that there are those that are on the outside that you know label communities yeah. and Tuba is one of those communities that they label yeah. and um, because they may have had some little difficulties and that kind of stuff I mean which community doesn't mm -hmm. all right and um, you know I am glad that you said okay at the end of the day though there may be one or two yeah. in between issues at the end of the day by and large the community a and as one of the representatives from a local perspective um involved in, in in representation in the community you are going to obviously try or, or ought to try your yeah. best to ensure that there are certain amenities and certain programs yes. that are brought yeah. into the community yeah. to create uh, that change because far too many times we have people that stand on the outside and they label yeah. and they, 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 they cast that, that, that shadow yeah. over that they, nothing good could come out of Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. Not at all. And yes. I'm glad that you took the. Uh, listen to me, I'm really glad you did that because I was <laughs> kind of leading. Yeah, leading because we, we, we tend to always, you know, stereotype certain communities. Yeah, that's good. You know, um, I do have, I do represent a, a squatting community. And even that and all, we tend to, 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 to stereotype them as, you know, this and that ghetto community. But really and truly, that's just not what it is. Yeah, yeah, it isn't yeah. that. It isn't that. And I mean, granted, in every community, we have just one or two mm -hmm. bad apples, mm -hmm. as the case may be. But the general census of the community is, is wonderful communities. That's great. Yeah. That's great. yeah. That Proud to be their representative. Correct. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And I'm glad to hear that that is, you, you know, you're confident about it. and you know, you're taking that representation. Council, you made, you made a mention as well to um, COVID-19. I mean, oh. it's, it's, it's still with us. Um, we have to be, for unfortunately, we have to live with it. Um, I am aware of a lot of representatives and countries, obviously, that really couldn't do hmm. what they wanted to do for the last two years. Yeah, and from yeah. that local perspective, as a councillor, I know for a fact the challenge you all would have had almost in for two years yeah. because even though this last year this yeah. is um, the last year of your term you still have challenges in <laughs> to retreat. so you would have had two years out of that term <sighs> well how it you, was you manage watch that <laughs> it was tough um really and truly um we had a lot of really and truly uh, for the past two years it was challenging there, I mean, from the first lockdown to the second lockdown, wow. to the, you know, all the different Pretty lockdowns. Much, yeah. um, but for us as a representative, for all representatives, we were seen as essential workers. So really and truly, we were never in lockdown. We were always on oh, the road. Yeah. We were always outside. We had a pass. We were in the communities um, because because of the measures a lot of representatives i mean i might be speaking bold here but i can speak for myself and i know a few others they li we literally went into the community to drop off hampers into the community to deliver these wow. relief items um in fact in my community i did face masks in the mailboxes i did it in all the mailboxes so persons got a face mask um we had the turuba village council we had koke village council we had msk assisted me with the distribution and then some other well wishers that i gave them and they put it in various mailboxes because of course when the mask mandate came into play we wanted to ensure everyone had a mask That's right. right and that was the first thing safety of course was the first prerogative because people were literally dying well people are still literally That's dying right. so if they say okay that was what the research would have said mask wearing is important so the first thing to do was to see how do you get a mask sure. at least try to get one to every single household listen and i realize some people in her mailbox eh? 
that's when I realized some people eh, have uh, mailboxes, you know. But but besides that, that was the goal. How do you get a, ma a, a, a mask to each individual? Right. And from that, then now, how do you assist with food assistance? Because now you had persons that lost their job. So I can't even tell you how many hampers oh. we did, but we did hundreds and hundreds of hampers. I can imagine. And for those years, it was exhausting because now the public see a hamper distribution, eh? But they don't know it's a lot behind a hamper distribution. Let me take this opportunity one time to thank my secretary, my lone soldier, <laughs> Tiffany, because <laughs> she has it as well, you know. So you have to compile the list. You have to then call the individuals. You have to let them come out for it. You have to get the hampers to the office. And I mean, it's, it's a lot of weight. Mm. And let me say, to add to what you're saying, that again, mm. two things quickly. One, that... Uh, and I think all councillors and representatives would have had that 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 um, issue, yeah. um, not just issue, but that um, they would have had to do deal with it that way. Mm -hmm. COVID time, and you, uh, it's a risk yeah. to in itself go out there into the communities, meet the families, and do distribution in that good deed. Yes, <laughs> I know persons who, yeah. as representatives, contracted COVID and died as yeah. well. Yeah. So I mean, God rest their souls. But it, it, it goes to show the lengths yeah, that we are willing that to you go. all have been going. And I'm, 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 I'm speaking for across the political yeah. divides, yeah. all right? Across the political divides, because I'm aware of councillors from other political parties who have done, I mean, they have gone beyond, yeah. all right? And again, it, 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 this, that, this, that season really required putting aside politics, yeah. putting aside party and that kind of stuff, but just treating with the issue. Yeah. And I could imagine... It was challenging. challenging. Because like you said, we are vulnerable. We are humans. We, we can, we have persons who may have comorbidities. Thankfully, I didn't. Um, thankfully, I didn't get the virus as well. Really? But here I am also with parents that are, are senior citizens and, and you are concerned, would you not bring this home to your son, to, to your family members? I mean, in the earlier stages of COVID, you know, you come by the door, you take off your shoes, you take off your clothes, you don't touch anything. You know how it was at the beginning, you know, but it was a lot of anxiety. Um, it took a toll on me emotionally and I mentally. It did. It really did. Um, there was a need for me to readjust and adjust and readjust the adjustment that you just, just adjust, adjust. <laughs> you know, because it was a lot of changes happening. So not, yeah. And mentally, that takes a toll on it you. Does. It, it takes a toll on you. So there was a need for me to always be mindful of where I'm at mentally. Right, and keeping it together. And keeping it together. Correct. So home workouts was my thing, trying to, because the best relief of, of, of stress is exercise. Yeah. And, you know, you try to get that in because, remember, we can't even walk on the road and exercise That's on right, the road. No, yes, yes. <laughs> so, you know, how do you now relieve all of this stress? Because here you are taking the burden of many. Yes. Because you are getting the messages, hey, Kongsa, can I have some assistance? Or you are calling, because I, what I did too, I, I developed a system. I would reach out to persons, hey, could you find out how your street is going? Do you know anyone that you right. think would... Kind and of then, networking kind of thing. And then I network with the social workers, the probation officers. Now, that was easy for me, because I already had that network from before being wow. in that field. So they were now identifying persons that I may not know. Wow. So, you know, here you are compiling all of these lists, reaching out to all these people and you are putting yourself at risk and not forgetting that you did all of this and was doing all of this and your daughter son, <laughs> your son. son sorry yeah your son had, you had to take care of yourself yes, as well too yes. so i can imagine council I, I want to um ask our um the team to have played the the some of your projects some oh. of your work that you do and while they're doing running that screen i would have you share with us some of the projects um, you know, that you have been doing it in your area or done in your area and you probably took a touch to and probably what you intend to, to, um, to, to accomplish. accomplish. Um, well, it's, it's, it's been a lot that's been going on in, in Kokiotuba from, from, well, now it's six years I've been there. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, the first term you try to get to know the district and the goal was always to see how you could fix certain ill, certain dynamics. Um, one of the things I've always remained committed to was literally staying on the ground. I've been walking the district since then and, you know, meeting the residents. Now, I will tell you, every single complaint that I get, I usually would ask the building inspectors or the um, public health officers or the engineering department to accompany me to check these complaints because I always feel it's important to actually see the complaint. Complaints, what is right. the issue? How do we deal with this issue? 
But I can tell you that is also very tiring because <laughs> I have gone to my secretary would have checked it because we have a proper database in the in the office, and when we checked, the database is literally almost 200 or how much site visit just wow. visits that you are doing checking something checking it over then of course when the project begins you are there now checking this project again to ensure that it happens how it should happen and it is uh, 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 that in itself is a lot so as the representative one of the things I would have done um, Simpson Brown and Cookie there. Those there are was some of, those are some of the physical infrastructure. Yes, physical, in, physical infrastructure. But this was actually under buildings. I was able to reclaim a piece of state land there that I hope to beautify soon. Wow. But it was overgrown. The bush was in the road. The trees were hanging from the road, and we would have cleared that area. Um, in Taruba, I was adamant that this particular district would have gotten street lighting, and I wrote letters to several ministers. And of course, the manager at the time, the manager of uh, HDC Development, they came and um, they were at Rafik Jumadina night for if any of my residents in Taruba is logged on. He came a night and he said, Councillor, now understand what you mean because it had no street lights. Wow. So he actually saw it for himself. And actually, one of my residents invited me to a community meeting because they were hosting a um, police watch group. And only when they saw it, 17 street lights were installed, and that was a major accomplishment. Um, you can even and look. This was done during the COVID this period. This was during my time. This was just so before the COVID, COVID period. Right, nice. And I mean, that was something that I was very proud of because here I am, um, councillors before me were not able to get that done, wow. and I was adamant that it have to be done. Okay. And no matter what, I ensured that it was it was accomplished. Right now, we have a serious issue in one of my areas in Suruba on Raji Nanan. Um, we have a serious land slippage and again like most things I am pushing through with it I've been following up with the issue and oh actually look we are now spraying so this, is, this was when we this sprayed was the, this is the installation this was the, the installation right, when, when we did that yes 2019. Um, actually by that tree you're seeing in the back there that's where we had the community meeting and it was dark wow. and, in, and the, the manager in, in, in HEC would have indicated, oh gosh, I'm sorry for it. Well, I'm certain the community, um, and this is this is HEC development. Yes. yes, it's an HEC it's development. Great. So, you know, it, it's so I'm hoping that I can get that in particular address because that, that rocks me. Eh? Even wow. recently, when we're well, not recent, but in 2018, I think we had that um, earthquake. And all I thought of was, oh gosh, these houses probably down, you know. So it's something that we've been working on. Oh, this is the installation of street lights so i really try to see how we can address all of these issues mm -hmm. as well as you familiar it's supposed to be local roads and bridges but <laughs> it's now everything else that's right yeah. everything else yeah, everything else it. so just before you continue council i want to say to our um, viewing public that our number to call in is 3098924 3098924 we are also on facebook we're on YouTube and on Instagram. So people from Turuba Kokie, feel free to call in. Your counselor is here. Call in, ask the necessary <laughs> questions. Put on the spot if you have to. All right, but she's okay. here. And um, we want to have that conversation with you as well to be a part of it. So again, the number 309 8924 309 8924. Councillor, is there any major project? Because while we're speaking, you know, I'm seeing some of the projects rolling on there. Hmm. All right, showing I'm so disappointed the with these hums, by the way. But <laughs> well, we have a call on the line. Oh, hello, good evening. Uh, pleasant good night to you, Maurice, and good night to you, Teresa. Paul Hi. Saran here. I'm from San Fernando East. Hi. Um, my question to Teresa, I mean, first I'd like to commend that she's an excellent counsellor. Oh, I've met her like twice in my in my life. Okay. Um, what I can say though is that I know Teresa had um, issues in terms of local government in 2019 where they have to recount the votes, right? Mm -hmm. I want to know what kind of work that Teresa have been done in her tenure, in her in her local government tenure, that she are now able to convince the um, electorate and her purchases that, you know what, I don't want to be such a name margin mm -hmm. where I have to recount any more votes. I want to be able to get a bigger margin where I actually win the seat outrightly. So we don't have to request any votes from EBC. 
That's one and two. Um, let's see who forward with the new local government minister what we can do for San Fernando because we no longer want to be able to see um, we have UNC and we have PNM in San Fernando Corporation. We want to get back that to the People's National Movement. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, Councillor, <laughs> Well, um, I, I believe he may have tuned in a bit late, but um, what I want to explain, and I will just say it again, my district actually changed. The, the boundaries and the polling divisions within my district changed in 2006. 19. Nice. Well, 16 to 19. At the end of 19, when we went into the local government election, that would have changed. And as a result, they would have, the, the change resulted in my strongest polling division being removed from my district. In 2016, I won by 116 votes. And, in, and the polling division that was moved or, or removed from my district that now went into Monipo Navet was the largest polling division of 336 right it was also my strongest polling division so as a result it kind of had me in a minus um what i would say for me to get votes now to be honest with you there's only so much convincing you can do yeah. and we as a country need to decide if we really want representation and really what is representation to you and i will always remember a conversation i had with a lady on Taylor Street in Gopalans, and I'll never forget it. And I went to her and I said to her, I said, um, would you give me your support in 2019 upcoming local elections? And she said to me, I don't know. And I asked, I said, what is representation to you? What does it mean? And she said, what you mean? I said, your street is paved. Kajim Street, Taylor Street, and the other street be um, was, was addressed. We also constructed a footpath to Marabella um, Stadium. So all of this is just where she lives. And I said to her, I said, if, and, you, and she knows me. So it's not the, I ain't know, yeah, I ain't see you, you know, because she had a, a little dream that I always try to maintain. So I would always come and visit the neighbor and visit her. So she knows me. And I had to ask her, what, what? What? In other words, where one? Where one? Because be because if you see in that one, she's here. Two, she's doing what she said she will do. Then, what what do I need to tell you that you need to vote for me? Because if you are saying to me that at the end of the day, when it comes down to election, you have the power to cast a vote in support of someone. What is it that your is your benchmark for casting that vote? But if I am to be the devil's advocate, which I normally do on right. most times, um, you do know that there are people who believe that physical infrastructure or um, physical things that you do for me, either as a local representative or um, central representative, right. these are things that you have to do. Right. These are things that must be done. And I like to congratulate you for the things that I pay taxes for. Um, and they would, I mean, as much as, as crazy it's as your that job. song, mm -hmm. that's your job. Right. You want to praise you for your job. You want to yeah, as your representative, you had to pave the road. Mm -hmm. um, you, you do know there are some people that want water yeah. out of stone. Yes. But, right? but even, even Maurice, in saying that it is your job, it's a job well done. Correct. And that is that's what, what matters. Right. Because I could just, I, didn't, I don't have to go on a side visit. I could call and say, hey, go and check that dinner. I don't have to go and ensure that the drain was cleaned. I could call and say, hey, how it looking? Oh, okay, cool. No problem. You know, but it was a job well done. It, it speaks to more than just a doing my job because, and I mean, we, 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 we see it as well in, in even the teaching system or any system where just persons go. One pin. Yes. We have a caller on the line. Okay, sorry. Good evening, caller. Pleasant evening, Marie. Good evening. And pleasant evening to your guests in studio with you, Councillor Lynch. Yes, hi. Yes, are you hearing me? Yes, we're hearing you loud and clear. Yes, this is Maripo Navet in the house. <laughs> so uh, I'm here. I am here to give my colleague all the blessings, give her all the support. Councillor Lynch is an excellent councillor. She's you. on the ground. She's out there. Sometimes with her MP, when her MP is there, she's Councillor is a worker. I don't think no one can ask more of Councillor Lynch. She's been yes. there, she's been doing what she has to do, and I know she, her heart is with the people. 
Sorry, I just want to wish you, Teresa, I just want to thank wish you. you all the best and continue doing the excellent job that you're doing. And thank, thank you very you. much. That's, that's Councillor Cotier, isn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Calm is the voice, Councillor. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Yes. So go, go ahead, Councillor. Yeah. So, you know, we, 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 we need to look at those dynamics because if it is we have someone that we voted or didn't support, we need to look at did they do their job? Did they do their job well? Did they try? Mm -hmm. Did they go beyond the call of duty? Because when the time comes, you need to really, we should at least, should really evaluate what are the benchmarks what are the what are the what are the pillars what 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 is the yardstick that to say using. that you're using for for work? because i can tell you something marie since i've been in office for five years every tuesday i'm in office when i came when i became a counselor i remember um one of the engineers at san Fernando corporation told me he said counselor when you want their vote you go to them if someone has an issue, they must be able to find you. And you can go as far back on my Facebook page. Every Tuesday I'm in office. I have availed myself to, I mean, it will have the one or two random, random Tuesdays yes. where I'm not there. And even when I'm not there, I ask my secretary to be there, right. right? But generally I'm there. So if you have a concern or issue, let me know. And, and you know, you I, know? I, I'm glad you made mention of that because you see, it is then this it brings credence to programs like these yeah. platforms like these yeah. and others that would now educate the people and constantly do so yeah all right because we have a caller good evening caller hi, hi hello good hi. evening sir yes i just want to show some support for my colleague councillor lynch <laughs> thank you this is councillor paris thank you for yeah. joining us man Yes, and, 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 and I, we do share a border yeah. in Pleasantville, and the councillor is doing her best to serve her citizens of, of um, Pleasantville as well. Yes. And um, I want to congratulate her for um, her service. And her, this is her sixth year, Teresa? Yes, sixth year. Yes, I want to congratulate you. And keep, 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 keep it on. That's thank right. you, thank you. Thank uh, you very good. much, man. Pleasantly yeah. locked on. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm making the point that it's important to have sessions like these to continue, you know, as I said, educating the people and have, have, have people understand what their what the local representatives' rules and functions yeah. are. Because yeah. sometimes the expectations by people of their local representatives, representatives are not what is in their purview. Yeah. Um, also, it is important to have them know with regards to the resources that yeah. you have available yeah. to you, yes. all right? And the constant educating and updating. One of the things that I did when I was local government in, in local government is that I had constant um, community meetings over and over, bombarding them yeah. with information, yeah. since I always believe that information reduces risk, right. all right? And sharing with them how the dynamics works. Because as I said earlier, there are people who don't know the difference between yeah. local they and don't. general. They don't. You understand? There are some people believe that they don't need to vote yeah. for local, they only vote for general, yeah. but not realizing how important, how important local, and local is. is. Because that is the, that local really deals with, deals with your everyday issues yeah, that's your garbage collection your that's drain correct. cleaning because i will tell you in this term so the, the caller asks you know what can i do to ensure to be honest with you there is nothing you can do to ensure in terms of in terms of i can't tell you what to vote correct, but correct. what i would see is that mm -hmm. i would have done my what best, best. um in fact this term is the first time i can say all of my drains in cookie salt was cleaned all of my drains in Turban, I'm, I'm not even, when I mean all, I mean we have the major water courses that need mechanical cleaning, but all of my interlot drains, a uh, resident called me, say, Councillor, you send a man behind my house? I say, yes, <laughs> I send a man behind your house. <laughs> so I had a small team and they went drain to drain to street to street and we clean all of these things. And I mean, now that might sound petty, right? And it might again sound like, but that is your job. But uh. it's not just that, you know, because we are dealing with a system. And in that system, you now have to navigate a system to ensure that your residents get the resources right. and the resident now is, is gets, and that is representation that, that, that those things happen. Because the, it's because of your representative and the advocacy and the agitation with even the same organization that they belong to, 
is the reason why you are getting results. And outside of just the physical works that has to be um, delivered, whether mm -hmm. goods and services, you are, there's so much more that a counselor is involved in. I mean, I'm not, and outside of both yeah. funeral and a wedding, <laughs> um, you are you are almost the first back and yeah. call. Yes, you know, in several and instances, everything and socially, uh, culturally, everything, educationally. everything. Financially, well, yes, you know, because every aspect, you know, the council is so important, it's so intri intrigual. So, even when we look at WASA issues, T and Tech, you know, these are agencies, state agencies that have hotlines, phone numbers, but the, as a rep, you want to ensure, and again, and again, that is why I said it, it comes down to not just it's your job, but it's a job well. Done. Okay. I think I feel that's my slogan. It's ah, a job. It's a job well done. I feel. Okay. I feel I'm taking that one. You know, it. It be, was be, it here. It was it right here. Right because it. it's more than just doing your job. It's it's doing it well. That's right. You know, and it's it's and that well part, that wellness part, speaks to the representative. That's right. You and know, be, the the yes. actual rep, the cons or the person, because the right. person is now who would add the extra pizzazz that is needed, yeah. or the extra effort, or the extra call, or the you know. That's right. That comes from the individual. I so. feel in your man, I feel <laughs> And I'm certain that Turwa feels you and continue to feel you as well, yeah, Koki. Yes. So, you know, um, Councillor, you, you spoke, you know, so so passionate just now, you know, and, and, and again, as I said, I keep, ha will, will want to hammer home the need for, on your own too, even outside of this platform, taking that opportunity to going out there and really, really educating and, you know, opening the minds of the people. Yeah coming even on the heels of the pending implementation of the reform right. to come, um, the need to have the public mm -hmm. and you know, starting yeah. with your purchases, no one understand the mechanics of yeah. the Local reform. reform. I know the, gov your, 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 the government um, did do several consultations yes. and um, you know, fleshed out yeah. what it will yeah. bring and several, what, conversations. several conversations, um, consultations throughout the length and breadth. But I think there's a greater need yeah. to have those that those things that were discussed to come down now to the man on the ground yeah. and practically be imaged as to how it will work. Yeah. Because as you said in the beginning, the is and the is. What yeah. is what is what written is written and, and what, what is re reality required. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um it is important to um, really to have to have that advocacy and continued um, educating series and uh, of, of the budgets. Yeah. So, councillor, um, I, I I feel to hear, uh, actually, and I don't know why it keeps slipping me um, to share with me uh, what with us what any particular um, project, uh, any significant or signature project that you would want to highlight. Oh, um, I mean, all your projects could be significant. You're right. Something must yeah. give you a little... A little uh. Yeah. Um, actually, it's the formation of this group that we're going to do. That wow. one is, is really... Is going to, because let me tell you, eh, the social programs really adds the oomph in my life. Wow. Right? Um, very, as I said, the drains, local drains, roads, bridges. Yeah, we feel good when it's done. Woo, one yes. point to wrestle. Yes. Yeah, you know, but when you do the social program, so recently I had an issue on Tara Street and Kenneth Avenue in Cookie, um, a homeless lady. And you wouldn't believe, eh, Maurice, that it was a challenge getting her into a home. It was a challenge. Wow. And I will tell you, even as the rep, because the neighbor, um, we were lazy and we formed a little WhatsApp group. And because of COVID-19, she had to be tested. I went to the health center, asked the officer, hey, can I get her tested? Um, could you expedite? You know, not expedite, but more so when she reaches, she's tested immediately. So you made certain provisions. These are all the things you do for one wow. little case, right? And then um, the social worker at social development, Miss Farrell, she was on point. Um, you had the money, the police, well, TTPS, money for police station, the, the, the ambulance. And now at this point in time, we had a spike in COVID-19. So, you know, the ambulance were working nonstop. So, but this woman, I was able to now organize with all of these bodies um, because her relatives live abroad. She had nobody in Trinidad. And we were able to organize with all of these bodies to get her tested, get her into Ward 1, get her treated. Now she's in her home with medication, wow. functioning well. And you see those things? Simple things, yes. It really, really. is what adds to and you. And I'm certain that the family is appreciative yeah. of Yeah, yeah. So, so for me now, I'm running a series with women. 
um, trying to empower young women because like me as well I didn't mention but I attended Pleasantville Junior Secondary Pleasantville wow. Senior Secondary nice. um, a student of Monipo RC so you know San Flando East is gotcha. my space community base. yes on the ground that's you my come from the yes. ground <laughs> you know so you know when 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 now at when now at this time now you just want to when i do social programs and these programs where i feel i can empower i can make a significant change that's right. that feels good but that so so i'm true. looking forward to to starting this youth program and i'm also looking forward to my women series to see how we could keep making women feel empowered and understanding that hey that's you are true. just you're amazing Councilor, you know? we are having a nice time. Yes. But in, as they say, you know, all good things do come to an end. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm sometimes very sad when it, reaches, when it comes to half past eight because I find, you know... Time to come real quick, <laughs> boy. Come real quick. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. Um, that time flies fast when you're having a good time. Yes. Um, but so in closing, Councilor, I would want to hear your closing remarks, obviously, and what you would want to share with your... Um, leave with your purchases. And elections mm -hmm. for the local government is pending this year coming to the I think somewhere in November elections are on and um, I'm certain that Toruba Kuki would want to hear and the rest of Trinidad would want to know if you are offering yourself again, <laughs> or will be offering yourself again oh, oh you're like Ting boy oh, you're <laughs> this in the arena, you know, in the I mean I mean things are still very early okay. things are still very early and we are only in April I mean, the year kind of going a little fast, yes. but um, but when that time comes, you I would know if, if if I will be sending in an offer letter, All right. right? I don't want to preempt anything, but of course, when that time comes, well, I wouldn't say what you're preempting it. To Ruban and Cookie say they want you to Ruban and Cookie, yes, yeah, yes. you will get her. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> All but, right. So your closing remarks, Councillor. Um. Well, I want to say thank you. You're thank you for hosting me. Thank you for having me, and to my residents. I am always available to you. Always is a strong word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I am always available to you. I My office is at the Koke Community Center. I am there on a Tuesday afternoon to City Public. Other days I am out on the field. I cannot assist if I do not know. Wow. I cannot Powerful. assist if I don't Powerful. know. So the only way I can bring any assistance is if the issue comes to me in any form or fashion. I have persons that message me on Facebook. Some would message, um, would call me on the phone. Some will come into my office. Some will send an email. There are several different platforms you can use, but I cannot assist if I don't know. And one of the things I want to say as well, um, you know, very often the rhetoric is a docima counselor, a docima counselor, a docima counselor. So one evening I had a conversation with a young man and he said, counselor, so I gotta see you and ting, ting, ting. And I said, but you know something, your neighbor not seeing me because they're not home. And it's something I always try to remind persons. You know, we keep saying, I don't see, but sometimes when you don't see, it's because you're not home <laughs> you're not coming outside <laughs> because sometimes you are in the community you are calling out to the community they are inside yeah, you know so what i want to do is encourage you to to reach out to me you know meet me on the half third something you know because i i i i need you to help me as i help, help you right so you know i want to encourage you that we are in this together i cannot do it alone i need for you to tell me where the leaks are which lights are not working um how how i could assist which program you would like to join on and that is what i need from from my residents so mm. i want to encourage you all reach out to me let me know what's happening so i can see how we could assist let's work together to to build a better trinidad to bigger build a better cookie to a, a better city you know, so so council on the heels of that, mm -hmm. I would really want to thank you for taking the opportunity to come sure. here on this platform to share who you are, what you have been doing, and truly share from your heart you, Councillor Teresa Lynch, and your involvement within your community and your representation. So, ladies and gentlemen, we this brings the curtains down on tonight's series of Know Your Representative. And in so doing, as in thanking Councillor Lynch, I would also like to thank you, the residents, 
from particularly Kuki to Aruba who have locked on here and to you Trinidad and Tobago by extension. It is important to understand the need to know who your representative is and understand what they do and how they can better serve you. And one of the th key things I would like to take away from you, Councillor, is help me to help you. Yes. It is important to know we have a responsibility to our citizens to reach out in sharing with our representatives and finding out who they are and how they can help us. Yes. So to even those of you who are representing in other electoral districts throughout the length and breadth of the country, feel free to, be, to take the opportunity to and accept the invitation which I have sent out to you all in coming onto this platform and sharing who you are, what you do, and how best you serve your bodices. So tonight we want to say thank you and good evening. We want to end, Councillor, we would end with some of the clippings of those works that you would have done and some of the projects. So good night, ladies and gentlemen, and we would see you again next week, Wednesday. Watching the day unfold. Jada books is wonderful. It's something, it's something to behold. But if you love life as much as I do, put some, put something in the air now. And if you love Jack as much as I do, put some, put something in the atmosphere. Something, it's something to behold.